Um, I'm pleased to introduce our next speaker as Geng Lin, the uh, CTO for networking for Dell. He's got a, an incredible background, uh, including you know, Nortel Networks, which a lot of us unfortunately have, um, and Cisco and uh, Natopia and Motorola as a result. He's also been very active uh, kind of bridging research with commercialization. So he's got a strong publication record active in the professional societies. And he's now with a computer company that sees the importance of networking in its future and for its customers. And uh, as head of this unit, he deals with customers of many sorts that are trying to understand how to reconcile their networking with their computing. So I'm pleased to introduce Dr. Geng Lin. All right, I'm now on. Yeah. So uh, thank you, Dan, for the uh, introduction. Uh, I think uh, he hits on uh, two uh, key points I'm going to uh, talk about. Uh, first is that I'm going to talk about SDN, uh, not only just from a networking perspective, but actually from a uh, IT infrastructure perspective. And second point is that from, from a business perspective. So we have a lot of uh, conversations about the technology aspects of SDN, and, but at the end of the day, from a commercial business world, show me the money. Where, what's the uh, business case behind it? So I'm going to talk about a few um, uh, near-term, low-hanging foot uh, business use case, and then use that to drive the conversation towards what are the key areas from a technology point of view, we need to improve the SDN ecosystem. So those are, so that's in general my flow. So if we look at the, uh, the compute industry and as well as the, the, the impact to the networking industry, we see that tremendous challenges and changes are coming to the network. So, Virtualization, um, big data, data growth, and mobility. So each one of them brings a tremendous amount of challenges to today's networking architecture, which is by and large the answer to the previous computing model, the client-server model, which was there in the last 20 years. So if we look at the virtualization trend, Gartner study shows that by end of the year, 70% of the computing uh, resources will get uh, virtualized, yet network is in the, in, the, in the middle of this virtualization, this agility uh, trend. Big data, data explosion is far exceeding the Moore's law. And network, how do we handle that? So IDC study shows that by 2020, 44 per, uh, fold of, of a data increase will happen between between 2010 and 2020. Again, far exceeding the Moore's law if you do the, the math. Uh, mobility, so uh, end user uh, as well as device are moving around, so traditional network architecture doesn't deal with that phenomenon. So how do we, how do we deal with the new trends? I was, uh, uh, earlier this year, a couple of months ago, I was on a worldwide tour talking to different uh, customers, uh, key customers of, of ours, and I met probably about 50 plus uh, CIOs in different sectors. And I asked them their view towards the future of, of uh, future direction of IT infrastructure, and in particular, the networking direct, uh, direction. And uh, overwhelmingly, the answer comes back about convergence, flexibility, and, uh, and uh, application-driven. So I remember one conversation uh, over a dinner with uh, this uh, mid-size CIO, uh, a CIO of a mid-size uh, gaming, social gaming company. And uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a social gaming company with about eight million users. And I asked him how many staff members he has to run his data center operations. And he told me three. Three people, the entire infrastructure department, three people to support eight million users. That's unbelievable. So the, the key to the, the, the uh, success is, is uh, 
application driven, is automation, is making the uh, network to be and the application to be to be linked together. So from that perspective, is SDN the answer? Probably yes, but before we give a, 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 a affirmative answer to that, we have to realize SDN is not just about switch, just a, not just about controller. It's actually the whole ecosystem, a whole business value chain. And that starts from the merchant silicon level to the, uh, to the switch level and to the controller and application ecosystem level. Each one, each player in the value chain has a, a role to play. And in order to reach the full benefit of SDN, everyone needs to evolve and evolve collaboratively. Uh, for example, to, and, and people are introducing individual functions at different layers, but I tend to, ar I would argue today, as an ecosystem, we're not very well coordinated. For example, Merchant Silicon, uh, the open flow capabilities we put into the Merchant Silicon are by and large limiting ourselves to a very narrow range of business use cases that we can enable through SDN OpenFlow today. And which uh, I will talk about one particular use case including a market uh, uh, analysis of the size of the market. But I would tend to argue fundamental changes need to happen at the Silicon level as an example to, to enable much broader uh, SDN use cases. Same applies to the business model of how do we, be, we build switches, apply to the, the entire ecosystem, how do we build collaborative SDN enabled applications. Hmm? Okay. So I would argue SDN is a journey. It's perhaps a decade-long journey. It's not just that uh, uh, a, a few years phenomena. And we need to, again, uh, I hit the point a little bit earlier, evolve the entire value chain from the silicon to device to control plane to the network uh, uh, application layer. And in fact, we need new software tools, programming languages, and uh, um, uh, 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 developer, uh, new developer skills, which are not quite there today. So networking uh, professionals are trained to do configuration. They're not necessarily proficient in programming. So it's the whole ecosystem needs to evolve over time. Let's talk a little bit about how to get this journey going. So industry perspective from the CIOs I talked to, they would like, in general, embrace low-hanging fruits. So what's there today, and that can help me. So from Dell perspective, we are uh, we identified and we are we are approaching this one uh, we believe quite useful uh, use case. That's a multi-tenancy data center use case. And later I will actually show a little bit of our internal study of the the TAM and the uh, adoption rate of this one. And, uh, but at the highest level, I think multiple people talked about this use case, but the highest level is really about how do you support multiple virtual data centers uh, on, on top of a shared uh, uh, physical infrastructure. So each tenant has its own secure, uh, uh, virtually uh, logically controlled their own keys. And, uh, it's not to say that the today's architecture, network architecture, cannot do this. It's just that it's not flexible. It doesn't meet the operational agility that I described earlier. So, so it's a, it's a, I think someone touched on that earlier. It's a total cost of ownership thing. It's not about a brand new function. Um, Without going into the, the details of that use case, uh, I'm uh, watching at the time I left. So let me quickly talk about Dell's approach. Use this one as an example. How do we approach SDN? So contrast to some of the players, 
we are not approaching this just from a one layer perspective. We are developing a, a suite of uh, uh, multi-tenancy data center solution that includes the open flow enabled switches, uh, the uh, open flow controller and connection manager on top of it, and the multiple uh, orchestration uh, uh, software on top of, of the, the, uh, the controller plane. And uh, this case, key to this solution, and by the way, we are demoing this uh, today at the, the uh, conference. Key to this solution is, uh, are the following. So first is a logical tenant view, give the, the, uh, the say, a hosted uh, serv uh, cloud service provider the ability to partition the infrastructure into logical hosted view. But we also realize that the killer, the, the main use case for this one would be that for, for uh, uh, enterprise customers to deploy this in a private and hybrid cloud uh, deployment environment with multiple orchestrators on top. Let me explain what, what that means. So imagine that if you are a CIO and you need to partition your data center into a private cloud zone, which you have your own application, your total control, and a public facing virtual, virtual private, but public cloud facing zone, that's, that's to host some of the bursting applications and so on. The two infrastructures are built on top of the two different uh, uh, software stacks. Very likely your private zone will, ha will be built on top of uh, uh, some combination of a VMR uh, a stack with vCenters and so on. And uh, the public facing zone likely to be built on, on top of a KVM and OpenStack uh, uh, software stack. So how do you, in, in such a mixed environment, software environment, you deliver multi-tendencies and you can still manage the, the resource in a seamless fashion. So for that, we develop a solution that has multiple orchestrators on top of it. On the left-hand side, you saw the Dell's uh, own uh, AIM, Advanced Infrastructure Management uh, Orchestration Solution, that interacts with the vCenter uh, a VMware stack. And on the right-hand side, you saw the OpenStack plugins. So we develop plugins into OpenStack orchestration uh, uh, software. So the two are mapping onto the same physical infrastructure, and we have a connection manager somewhat similar to, I think, Rob Wood, uh, Sherwood mentioned yesterday, the, fl the flow visor type of uh, uh, function that, that serves as a single uh, consolidation point that controls the resource conflict, resolves the uh, resource conflict at the physical infrastructure level. So this is a solution that we are, we are developing and it shows that our approach to OpenFlow is not just from a, a perspective of just build uh, OpenFlow enabled switches, but rather focusing on the end operation of a CIO's uh, 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 scenario. So, Very quickly, uh, going through this one, so people a may ask, what's the market, what's the money, uh, how, show me the money, what's the market size? So our, our internal study shows that a multi-tenancy data center environment by 2015, probably from a networking perspective, will reach to a size of about $1.7 billion. And if you wonder what, what does that mean to, in the context of a total data center networking? This is probably about 8%, so just to give you a perspective. Um, what lessons did we learn from this, this uh, solution as well as some other emerging uh, business use cases we are, un we are currently uh, under development in-house? We realize that the, the improvements needs to be done across the board, data plane, uh, control plane, and ap application development ecosystem. I'll go through them very quickly here. So at the data plane, what the learning we have is that the specification, the cycle for specification, uh, open flow specification is 
a mismatch to the silicon development cycle. So we have rolled out 1.0, 1.1, and 1.2, but look at on the silicon side, their development cycle is measured by two years and, and like that. There is a clear mismatch. So it doesn't matter how do you release your, 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 uh, uh, your open flow spec, uh, uh, the silicons are not catching up. The silicon wonders, on the other hand, are not putting open flow as the, the high priority. They, their designs are more still optimized to support the current networking feature. I'll give you an example. The flow matches, the scalability on flow matches, the size of the TCAM and so on, is, is, is not for real life deployment, I would say. Um, it doesn't leverage the, the other capabilities where you can put onto the, the silicon design, uh, such as the MPUs, um, they don't. So, uh, control plane. So the uh, scalability of, of the control plane. I think now more and more people start to realize that the control plane problem is really a, a problem of how do I maintain a consistent single view of the entire network, the state of the network. And uh, that really boils down to a distributed database problem. And uh, we don't, uh, we're marching towards that, but I think this is an area that people need to, uh, to uh, uh, improve interoperability between SDN domain and non-SDN domain, interoperability between different controllers, and so on. So those are all issues we need to resolve. Uh, another piece, relationship between SDN control framework and the hypervisor control framework. So Martin mentioned a little bit earlier. So that relationship, we need to get that resolved. Is overlay the answer? Perhaps, but time will tell. Uh, application ecosystem. Today, the development skills are not ready there. So developer skills are not ready there. Programming languages are not there yet. Um, so including even the p potential future uh, uh, education, uh, the university curriculum to, to uh, develop uh, gra new grads that are capable of doing SDN network oriented uh, programming. So those are all the areas needs to uh, we as a society needs to uh, uh, to improve. Quick summary uh, based on our uh, our uh, uh, entry into the SDN today. So I would say, at, and I, I, the con conclusion is more at the industry level. I would say networking architecture is moving towards this software defined networking paradigm and OpenFlow represents by far the best architecture choices for that. However, we have a lot of challenges throughout the entire ecosystem, from silicon to, to, uh, to a switch, to the data plane, uh, sorry, to the uh, control plane and to the application ecosystem. We need to resolve the issue, we need to figure out the relationship between SDN control framework and the hypervisor control framework. That to me is one of the most, uh, most uh, pressing issue. We need to figure out a solution. Um, and lastly, SDN is a journey. So we need to all work together to evolve the ecosystem. Thanks, I, uh, I'm ready to take a few questions. Hello? Okay. So, uh, one, we actually had a discussion with colleagues here uh, during the break, and one of the kind of problems that people see about uh, open flow is security, right? So, let's say you have 1,000 customers, and you have 1,000 virtual networks, which sit on the same physical network, right? And one of those customers is compromised. So the virtual machines which belong to this one single customer mm -hmm. are compromised. Uh, from your opinion, does OpenFlow provide enough separation so that this one single customer cannot issue a denial of service attack on the 999 other customers by, for instance, putting some load on the OpenFlow controller mm -hmm 
or on the rules, because I think there are only a certain number of rules in the cache. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So how do you consider this one? Yeah, I can. I, I think there is no um, definitive answer yet. The reason I say that is because the uh, we are evolving the open flow side, and uh, a lot of the capabilities are not in place. I could argue on both sides, potentially. So one side says that actually a centralized control mechanism actually gives you a better uh, 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 dealing for security attack like this. In fact, I think uh, uh, Yuri, uh, the Google, the first talk actually made that argument that, uh, that I, have, I can secure this sing single place uh, rather, rather than if you compromise at the distributed uh, route, today's architecture there, they can easily screw up your, your uh, route table, right? So, so that's one argument. I, and I think that's, that's definitely true, if given the, if you have the right, um, right uh, um, infrastructure support in place. I also see uh, potentially another, the, the other side of the argument, which was that uh, indeed if you, centralize all the intelligence into the, the, sing, the one place, and if that is down for whatever reason, then the entire system is down. And this actually uh, dated back to the original internet uh, design philosophy, right? So the, the reason that uh, we designed the internet in the distributed fashion was to, to sustain that uh, quote unquote nuclear attack. And this way we may and therefore, we made the entire network to be autonomous uh, subsystems. So I don't know the, I don't think the society knows that answer yet. We need to uh, collectively to, to, to uh, uh, basically to develop and to develop the answer. Um. Thank you, Gig.